You stood before creation Eternity in your hands You spoke the earth into motion My soul now stood before my failures and carried the cross for my shame my sin weighed upon your shoulders my soul now to stand so what can I say so what can I say thank you for tonight we thank you for your i just ask your anointing lord just to preach your word and minister to your people in jesus name amen i want to start off with a little it's kind of a funny story um, that i heard today as a testimony 
and it was when Heidi Baker met uh, Bob Jones for the first time, if you heard of them. Heidi Baker's a missionary, and Bob Jones was a really very prophetic guy. And so anyways, um, it was Heidi Baker's husband and Bobby Connor that brought Heidi to go see Bob for the first time. And she was complaining, I don't want to do this. I want to go back to Mozambique. I want to be there for the kids. And they go, no, you're going to go see, you know, Bob Jones. And so they finally get there. And then Heidi Baker goes, okay, what's the word of the Lord? I heard you hear God. And... (laughs) And it was funny because Bob was like wearing the sweater that like was showing part of his belly. He just looked like kind of an odd guy, but this guy hears the Lord. And so Heidi goes over there and okay, lay it on me. And Bob Jones goes, the Lord told me that you need to, to tell you to eat a cookie. And he's thinking, are you, you know, she's thinking, are you serious? Are you joking? And he goes, the Lord told me to tell you to have a cookie. And Heidi Baker is someone who, he's, she's actually fasted for a third of her lifetime. She's always fasting. And she felt like during that time, she was always trying to earn God's favor by fasting. And she actually felt the Father's heart to say, actually, you can enjoy having a cookie right now. It was a very you know, silly thing to do. And so right there, she had her cookie. And then she goes over to Bob again and says, do you have another word for me? And he goes, I want you to have a second cookie right now. So she had a second cookie. And, um, you know, the Lord does care about the details. And sometimes it's more about understanding his heart than just always getting an accurate prophetic word. Like she understood the Father's heart out of that place. It wasn't just, hey, tell me all about my life. But she came in encounter with the Father that she needed to know. And so that is one amazing reasons why we prophesy is to bring people into an encounter with Jesus with his heart and not just to, you know, it's not a game, you know, it's to bring people into an encounter. And so I love it. Um, I've been asking the Lord for more. Like, God, I want to, let's, let's prophesy. It says you can all prophesy. It's not just the, the preacher. It says all of us can because we have the Holy Spirit. Okay. So I'm just hungering for more of that. So get ready maybe after, see what the Lord wants to do. Um, but I want to preach tonight, has nothing to do with the story of a power of life and death that is in the tongue. And so it says right now in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And so some people say, you know, you're going to eat your words. That's actually in the Bible that we actually eat our words. If we're always speaking negatively, we're going to eat those words. If we're speaking life, we're speaking the truth, we're going to eat those words too. And so this is not a condemning message at all. This is about speaking life so we can be on the path of life, okay? And so, and it says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So if we keep declaring, you know what, I'm always anxious, I'm always depressed, I'm good for nothing, and we keep declaring that over ourself, we actually start believing that as our true identity. So despite your feelings, despite what you're going through, we got to move in the opposite spirit and speak our true identity in Jesus. I think a lot of times it's easy to say, you know, I, I never hear God's voice. We're speaking death when we start saying that. I always get nightmares you know, if we start saying that every day, we think it's a normal thing to do, but we're speaking death. And so instead, it says in Joel 3.10, let the weak say that I'm strong. So it doesn't say let the weak get very authentic all the time and just say you're always weak. It says let the weak say that you're strong. Let the anxious say that you're peaceful. Let the depressed say you're joyful. Let those who feel like they can't hear God's voice say, I can hear God's voice. Let those who feel condemned say, I am forgiven. So it's beyond your feelings. You're declaring the word of God that then changes your reality. It changes your identity. Okay? And so it says, don't everyone yell too much, but it's, I'm, I'm excited about this because it's the power of our words. It says in 1 John 4, 17, As Jesus is, so are we in this world. So we look through the lens of Jesus is our identity. 
If, is Jesus free? That means I'm free. Okay? Does Jesus hear God's voice? That means I do. Because it says in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives inside of me. So if we really, really believe that our old man has been crucified, we're not trying to fix the old man. We've got to believe that he's actually dead, and then it's Christ living inside of us. I'm preaching to myself. I'm not preaching to anyone else. I need to hear this. Instead of trying to fix the old man, he's, he's crucified. He's done. He's gone. You can't try to clean up a dead person. He's dead. Okay? And so that should bring some hope, you know, and... One of my favorite stories about declaring the truth is the lady with the blood issue. And for 12 years, she went from physician to physician and only got worse. And so her reality, talk about being in the wilderness for 12 years straight. And what she did in Matthew 9, 20, it said, or 21, it says, she said to herself, so she spoke it, if only I touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take courage, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was cured from that very hour. So she had to declare it with her mouth. She carried the solution in her heart, but she needed to get it on her lips. And that got the attention of Jesus. I think a lot of times we already carry the solution in our heart, but we're not letting it go on our lips, okay? It says in 2 Corinthians 4.13, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore speak. So we have faith in our heart, and then we got to speak what we believe, okay? I know it's a very, it sounds really simple, but this is a huge key for breakthrough, for freedom, for your miracle, okay? It says in Romans 10.9, it says the word, which is the rhema, it's the word of the Lord that you need to hear. It says the word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. So sometimes we're running to another you know, prophet or another man of God or woman of God. But it says right here, the rhema word is near us. It's in our heart and it's in our mouth. Okay, so we got to believe. Like she carried the rhema word, but she needed to declare it for her miracle. And I love this because, you know, for 12 years, you can be beat down by the devil, and all you need is 10 seconds of faith to completely change your whole life around. All you need is 10 seconds of the gift of faith to come upon you to declare one sentence for you to get radically healed. She didn't have to go to physicians after that for day in and day out. She had one moment of faith that she was forever changed. Her identity was changed in a moment. And so that should bring a lot of hope for people that might be struggling. And maybe it's been years they've been wanting freedom or breakthrough. But she literally said one sentence in faith, and she was forever changed. Um, and so, you know, I, I have close friends and family that are dealing with sickness. And, you know, like as a brother, as a close friend, you want that done with, you know. And sometimes the closer it is to you, the more you want that to be completely healed. You want that giant, to their head to be cut off, you know. And so I'm believing tonight that Jesus is going to cut off some giant's heads. I don't want to talk about it. I really feel to really pray for the heads of the giants to be cut off tonight. Maybe it's been 15 years, but that thing gets slayed off. Okay, and does it come back? Once the head is cut off, it can't come back. It's gone. Okay, bury it, whatever, it's gone. It's not coming back. We got to believe when David killed the Goliath, that head didn't come back to the body. Okay, so, um, and I want to read that story, David and Goliath, in first seven, sorry, first Samuel 17, 11, it says, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So when the giants of today are speaking and we're listening to what the giants are telling us, it's going to bring fear and great dismay to all God's people. So David had an anointing to completely shut off his ears to what the giants were saying. 
whether it's like for today, if it's, if it's fear, if it's sickness, COVID, if it's whatever, the control of the government, we need to shut off our ears to what the giants are saying. Okay, but it's not enough just to do that. David had this bold faith. And it says in 1 Samuel 17, 45, it said, David said to the Philistine, because the Philistine's taunting them 40 days, day and night. And this is David's response. He didn't say, you know what, Philistine, we're, I'm going to comply to what you tell me to do. I'm going to honor you. We're going to come into an agreement. David didn't do that. If there's anyone to follow, I mean, it's Jesus, and then the Old Testament is David, okay? Was he, you know what, Goliath, let's be friends. You know, I'll give you half of my property. No, he didn't do that. So this is his response. It says, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've defied. He's not speaking really nice to this giant. Okay, this day... The Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands." That doesn't sound like a super nice Christian prayer that we pray on a Sunday morning or before we go to bed. That sounds like a very fierce warrior prayer. And if we want to really slay our giants, we got to have that ferociousness with boldness to pray and get pissed off. Am I allowed to say that? To get mad at the, to get really, we got to get mad. We got, it's okay to get mad at the enemy. It's okay to get mad at our giants. It says, be angry and do not sin. Yeah. It's what you do without righteous anger. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. David had a righteous anger, but he used it for the kingdom to slay his Gol- the Goliath. Yeah. And so that is the key right here. And he didn't just talk the talk. He wasn't just praying alone. He put faith into action. And it says in verse 48, so it was... When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. He slung it and struck the the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. And that's, that's talking about deliverance from your enemies right there. That's in the Bible. So if it's all about, hey, guys, just be really nice. Just talk very kindly. Well, we got to take aggressively our enemies coming against us. Okay, and obviously in the New Testament, we want them saved. We want to talk about in the spiritual realm, we need to take authority. And we got to cut off their head. Okay? And so I love this because one thing that David said, he says, this day your head's going to be cut off. He didn't say, one day you'll finally get free, I'll finally be delivered from Goliath. He said, this day is going to be complete deliverance. And I think in the church we can hear the hope message of hopefully you'll be free once you finally get it together. But God's heart is that today the Goliath's head will be cut off from every person here. Whatever it is, if it's fear, whatever, that the head will be cut off and never return. That's his heart for now. Okay, not a year from now, this very moment, that's his heart. And so we got to believe that it's today he wants to do that. Not one day, hopefully, when I win the lottery. It's now. That's his heart. Okay? And I was listening to this message because it's our words are so powerful. There was a lady, she went into a healing uh, meeting and she was blind and she was elderly and she went in and got fully healed of her eyes, she walks back to her car with her family, and she goes, hopefully this will last. We'll see how long this lasts. So when she says that, then all of a sudden she went back to being blind because her words are very powerful. So she gets mad at God and takes the keys, and she locks herself in the car, and then her family is like, hey, open up. No, no, no. And so the family has to go back to the preacher and then tell the preacher what happened. And so they had to ask for like a coat hanger to unlock the door. So to make a long story short, 
keep speaking life. We don't want to take anyone out of the car that locks himself in because they're mad, you know. And so we got to take responsibility for our words. And sometimes, you know, very unfortunate things happen. So I'm not saying whatever, just brush it off. But it's how we respond to the circumstances. That is the key. You know, because we can be all in the same storm, but I believe when we're using our mouth to speak truth, we get out of it faster. You know, Jesus was in the middle of the storm. The disciples were terrified. They're, you know, freaking out. And Jesus didn't pat them on the back. Hey, I'm so thankful that you're just being very authentic. No, he spoke to the storm, and there was a great calm. And I believe in the middle of our storm, that's probably the last time that we need to let our emotions just get out of control. Okay? I've done that in the past where I would keep reiterating, hey, yeah, it's getting really heavy. Yeah, it's, and I keep reiterating, and you're empowering the storm. You're empowering the devil. Instead, either be quiet or empower Jesus. Amen. You know, when they walked around the walls of Jericho, God told them, you need to be silent for six days. I believe the reason why was they were going to speak doubt and unbelief because nothing was going to happen. And so on the seventh day, that's when they praised the Lord, and that's when the deliverance came. And so if you're in the middle of a storm, maybe the best thing you can do is just be quiet, okay, or speak life, okay? <clears throat> And it says in Proverbs 6, 2, you are snared by the words of your mouth. So sometimes we go into a pit because of the words that we keep reinforcing. Okay, and I'm, I'm praying that we can, if words can get us into the pit, then powerful words of truth and life can get us out of it. Okay, it says in Proverbs 16, 23, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. So we need to teach our mouth. How to speak. <laughs> Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. If we have words of life, it's actually going to bring healing to our bones and sweetness to our soul. Proverbs 13, 3, he who guards his mouth protects his life, but the one who opens his lips invites his own ruin. Got a couple more. Proverbs 21, 23. He who guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from distress. You know, and I heard this story. There was um, a guy named Lester Summerall. Have you guys heard of that guy? And he was doing missionary work with this other pastor who was a Methodist. And so they had to leave the country on boat because it was like a lockdown. It wasn't during COVID, so it was a different time. Um, but they're going, and they had about a week in the seas. And Lester goes, hey, how about you take the first meeting, and you can do, preach a message. And it's only their families. And so the pastor goes up, and he goes, dear God, we are deep, deep sinners. Please forgive us of our continual sinning. Um, please help us. You know, it was kind of like that prayer of defeat. And so Lester Summerall goes, okay, well, this is a message. we we got to bring victory, what Jesus has done on the cross. So the next night, he preaches victory in Jesus, hopefully that the next pastor would actually receive that. But the next morning, you know, the, the other pastor goes up, and he goes, our Father, we are deep, deep sinners. We sin every day. Forgive us of our continual sinning. And so Lester Summerall goes over to the guy and says, we're the only families on this boat. Where's all the sinning happening? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. It's only us. It's only you and your family and us. Like, what's going on since, like, the last 24 hours? And the pastor goes, um, this is how I've been taught to pray. And so Lester went to the Word of God and said, no, we are actually free in Jesus. We're not these continual sinners, you know. And so that brought a revelation to, to Lester or to the other guy. And yet being an evangelist and like planning all these churches because he had one simple message of our freedom in Jesus. You know, and that reminds me of our, the story of the promised land. And, you know, you have 12 spies that go out to the promised land and they all saw the same thing. But the 10 spies reported they magnified the enemy and it brought fear to every person. And then the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, they magnified God. And that was the faith message they needed to hear. But everyone else wanted to kill them and stone them to death. 
And that was the right message. And so I believe, you know, when you carry a faith message, that's not always the popular message, but it's the Lord's message. You know, I'm not trying to fit in with what everyone else is saying or doing. David did not fit in. He was the minority that cut down the Goliath. Okay? And I just want to just share a little bit longer. You know, it says in Genesis 1-2, it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So the whole Bible, whole creation starts with God speaking truth, speaking life to existence. And so it was in the middle of darkness that God spoke light. James 3, 4, it says, Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. And so you can have two boats in the same exact storm, and one person is speaking defeat and death, and that's going to completely change the course of the boat a different direction. And so our words are the rudder of our life. And so, you know, I am keep reiterating this, but it's important, you know. Psalm 34, 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And I love it because he doesn't say, I'm going to praise the Lord in my good seasons. It's continually, I'm going to have the praises of God in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. You know, my, I shall boast in the Lord. Are we boasting in Jesus? Or are we boasting on, in the devil's territory? You know, what are we boasting in? And just one more verse, maybe two more. <laughs> Psalm 91, verse 9 it says, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. But actually it starts off with if you say this. If you speak, you know, victory, this is what's going to happen. If you just believe it is one thing, but if you profess it with your mouth, then no harm will come near you. That's powerful. And so... You know, realizing that and like going back before, if we have nothing positive to say, you know, maybe just be quiet for six days and see what God does after. But um, I was hanging out with my brother a couple days ago, and um, he says, sometimes you just have to posture your arms before the Lord. And he lifted up his hands. And when he said that, instantly I felt the Holy Spirit on the top part of my stomach that the Lord wanted to bring healing to him. And it was a word of knowledge for him. And he goes, yeah, that's, I've been dealing with that. And I prayed healing for him in that moment. Um, but sometimes we think it's random times when the Lord speaks. But it's like the Lord said, okay, slow down. Okay, there's a reason why I gave you that word of knowledge. It was responding to what your brother just said about raising his arms up, you know. And that there's victory when we actually also raise our arms to the Lord. It says in Exodus 17, 11, as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. And so this is not just a vineyard thing of people that just like to do this. This is also a key for breakthrough for people. You know, so if you can't speak life, you know, in your situation, then you can be quiet. If you can't even do that, then lift up your arms to the Lord, maybe before you go to bed, maybe in worship, and see what the Lord's going to do. Um, and so I'm just really, I don't know, I just want to see the Lord do some things tonight and, um, and on the Central Coast. So if we can invite the worship team up. Um, and I saw when I was praying today, I was just like, Lord, I want you to just speak, <laughs> you know. And I saw this word for Alan. Where's Alan at? Oh, right there. And I was just praying. Um, and I saw you going into people that were in cages. And you're going 
to their situation and bringing a key to them, and then they were coming out of their cages and they were getting set free. But it wasn't about them coming to you because people in bondage, they can't come. You know, they're stuck in the cage. But I saw you going to um, even, like people would say, dangerous situation and bringing the key of freedom and them getting set free and then setting other people free. It's like a domino effect for other people. And you just carry so much freedom, you know, you just overflow it. And you have it um, to bring to the, the non-believers, you know. And so I feel like just to stand up, if we could just pray over you. Um, yeah, Lord. Yeah, let's just stretch out our arms to Alan. God, I thank you for, for he is free. He is just overflowing with your love and your freedom. I thank you for the new season that he's stepping into, Jesus. And we thank you that he holds the key to people's souls getting set free. And, and instantly, like, free. So, Lord, we thank you. That wouldn't have to be, like, a five-year process. They would get free in a moment. They would, and I thank you for evangelism. I thank you that he's an evangelist for this area. Um, I thank you, Lord, that he's an evangelist. Yeah, I just say you're anointed as a man of God, but also as an evangelist for this region. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the keys that he carries. And thank you, Lord, for just telling him where to go. There'd be a certain place you would go to, and boom. And God, I thank you for the grace of the Lord on his life for salvations, that people would just come to the Lord easily, and they would just be droves that come to Jesus through Alan's life, Lord. And just one last thing. I, um, it says that the hearts of the Father would return to the sons and the, and the sons of the fathers. So I thank you for that, the Father's hearts returning to the sons. And the son's coming back to the father. So, Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And um, I just want to do, uh, yeah. And just one couple more. Thank you. Everybody got all silent all of a sudden. Um, but if anyone has, there's something wrong, and we could pray for you after, but it's with your kidneys, it's your right kidney, and it's the bottom part that I felt really strong Jesus wanted to heal. Um, and if that's you, we, I could pray for you after. Um, and so thank you, Jesus. If you're watching online, we thank you that you're the healer. Lord, we thank you for, for the giants that you want to cut off tonight. And we, we, we have this bold, aggressive faith. We don't have passive, like God knows where I live. We're going to put faith into action like David did. And we have that warrior faith, Lord. I just ask tonight that there would be freedom for every person, Jesus. And so what we're going to do, um, we're going to go into a song. I'm just going to invite anyone to come up for, for anything. Any, if you need, maybe it's a giant of health that you've been dealing with um, or fear, whatever it is, family stuff. But I'm going to invite Bob up here. Um, and I'm also going to invite a couple other people. Uh, let's see, Rob's up there, but Ceci, um, and PJ as well. But we want to pray for you guys. And But I don't want us to do like a very like chill prayer. We're going to do a very bold prayer, okay? And we might yell a little bit or something. And so, Jesus, we just thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I pray tonight that giants' heads will get cut off and not return. In Jesus' name, amen. When I lock eyes, when I lock eyes with you. 
seen coming Coming like a fire And coming like a flood I don't care what it looks like I'm so in love Coming like a fire Coming like a flood I don't care what it looks like I'm so Sing all I want Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, God, we just say, um, would you have your way right now, Lord? I just pray right now, Jesus, if this is his tug on your heart, if you just want, um, if you need a miracle, I just feel like if you need an extraordinary miracle right now, we want to invite you up. If you need whatever it is, um, we're going to take authority together. Um, and I just want to share one more thing. Um, there's Joyce Meyer, is, you know, she's a speaker. And she, as a kid, she got really, she has some traumatic stuff that happened. And she said every day she, has, she declares that she is the righteousness of God, that she is forgiven. That, and she declares life every day. And so I just, yeah, I just pray everyone here that we would just start speaking truth and speaking life every day, whatever it is. And Lord, we, yeah, we want, the, we want the deliverance right now, but we thank you that we have tools to stay free and to walk from glory to glory. And so God, we just thank you for your anointing tonight, Jesus. And if, there's, if, any, if anything, whatever it is, I don't, I don't care. We're just going to pray. Maybe you need your tongue anointed to start speaking life. Um, so, hey, God, we bless you, Jesus. We give you all the glory in your name. Amen. Bless you guys.